from what I've noticed too, like some people will take like more like renowned pieces. So like, so they'll take like a mainstream piece from like a Mozart or Be- uh, Beethoven. And I've actually like heard this uh, before on a song too. So they would take that unique sample and like, you know, use like layered uh, production, whether it's like trap beats, whether it's a hip hop beat and, you know, increase like the BPM in that sense too. And then like use that beat for TikTok in that sense too. For people who aren't into classical music, you know, they'll actually like enjoy the style, but for purists who are into that type of sound, you know, like usually like a mainstream or a creative piece, you know, you don't want to like destroy the piece and the in its purity and all that. So I don't know like how it would work if someone would uh, take a piece that you would work on and, you know, use like layered beats or like trap beats to kind of make it like more mainstream. Like would you prefer it or would you say like it kind of like ruins like the authenticity and artistry in that sense? So, I mean, my answer on that has to be multi-layered. Personally, I don't care. You can do whatever you want with any music that you want. And if you create something that doesn't sound good, I just won't listen to it. And that's up to me to decide whether it sounds good or not, because musical taste is highly individual and highly personal and non-transferable. As much as we talk about what music we like, as much as we hope to find people that share our tastes, even if you like the same group or the same artist or the same band, you're probably listening to it differently and extracting different things from it. And your actual perception of music is probably not one-to-one with the person you're talking to, even if you like the same artist. So you have to accept at some point that your own perception of music and the music that you like is only relevant to you. Yeah, almost no, definitely. Though I have to bring in, for example, the example of Kimiko Ishizaka, who is a classical music purist. She absolutely thinks that anything like layering beats on Beethoven is utter blasphemy and doesn't add anything. She hates every aspect of that. She would never support any of that ever. So there are people with very purist points of view on that. Um, but I mean, people aren't making music for Kimiko Ishizaka anyway. She barely listens to music other people create to begin with. So like, she's not a target audience that you design for. Yeah. I mean, if you're making music and if like, you're asking these questions to like gain insight from the point of view of a music maker, of a producer, the only thing that matters is your taste. So you have to decide, are you going to make music that sounds good to you or not? And if you're lucky, the music that sounds good to you sounds good to a hell of a lot of other people too, and you'll make money. And if you're like everybody else, then you'll make music that sounds good to you and you'll define and hone your skills and you'll find an audience and it will be, you know, big or small or medium, whatever. It depends very much on uh, whether you're lucky or not and whether you're good. Uh if you're really good, then you can actually sway people to come to your point of view and your tastes. Uh, you can be a taste setter, a taste maker, uh, but you have to be really good. You have to be original. You have to have ideas that nobody's had before. And well, that's just hard. 